Where are the world's millionaires moving? As Western countries impose higher taxes and reduce personal freedoms, millionaires are leaving. They're looking for plan B and they're even moving out of their own country. Today, I'm gonna to share with you who's gaining and who's losing. So there's a new report on so-called millionaire migration. I'm not sure that I entirely agree with the order of magnitude of some of these numbers, but basically they put together a study and they figured out who wanted to leave their country and who actually did leave their country. They talk about high net worth individuals. Now there are different definitions. It's generally considered to be a million dollars, sometimes excluding your primary residence, sometimes including, uh, sometimes liquid assets only, sometimes uh, all assets. And so depending on how you define that, there's different numbers out there. By any measure, tens of millions of millionaires in the world today. And those numbers are growing quickly, especially in emerging parts of the world. We've talked about that for a long time. And so I'm gonna share with you the actual numbers from a recent report that was sponsored by Visual Capitalist. I'm gonna share with you my own feedback from what we actually see as we explore markets around the world. And we talk to millionaires on a daily basis. If it's your first time here, my name is Andrew Henderson. I'm the founder of Nomad Capitalist. We're a boutique consultancy that helps seven and eight figure entrepreneurs and investors, basically the hardworking millionaires that they talk about in this survey. We help people go where you're treated best, lower taxes, more diversified assets, asset protection, second passports, basically making sure that you don't have all your eggs in one basket. I'm also the host of the biggest and best offshore conference called Nomad Capitalist Live, and that's open to everybody, whether you're a millionaire or not. So uh, let's look at this chart here. Uh, again, from Visual Capitalist, and uh, let's start with the masochists. Uh, this is projected uh, net inflows and outflows of high net worth individuals in 2022. Uh, expected 3,500 people will be uh, moving into Australia, 800 will be moving into New Zealand. Uh, obviously, those countries have had some of the more restrictive policies. If you were an Australian citizen, you couldn't even get into your own country uh, for much of the last two years. And so apparently, uh, I can tell you this, we have had a lot of people from Australia and a number of people from New Zealand that have said, I want out. And uh, we have helped them to move out of Australia. Uh, but I do think that as you've seen um, restrictive policies in parts of Asia, you're gonna see with Australia now largely reopen, uh, you're gonna see people applying for their rather expensive uh, residence programs, and they're gonna go back down there and sign up for their rather expensive tax rates. Uh, New Zealand, perhaps a little bit better. Uh, both countries now very much uh, on the left wing. And so uh, I think you're seeing people from Asia moving into these countries. Uh, certainly we can tell you from our experience, lots of folks are also moving out of these countries. Not just, not just folks that we're, we're helping, we're, we're helping these millionaire migration people. Uh, but there's lots of folks who aren't millionaires who also have wanted out as well. Where else though are they, is that, are they getting people? Singapore, 2,800 people. Now to me, that's more uh, meaningful because you know, if you've ever been to Singapore, Singapore is pretty small, obviously. I mean, compared to Australia, even compared to New Zealand. I mean, adding an extra 2,800 people, that is a bigger impact. Um, and so you're seeing people perhaps go there. You're certainly seeing people coming from places like Hong Kong. Um, but you are also seeing people who want to start businesses, people who are making substantial investments. That's more of an ultra high net worth uh, individual place for the most part. We don't have too many entrepreneurs who want to go and try and get a entrepreneur residence permit or entrepass. We have more people who are you know, 30, 50, 100, 200 million dollars who are interested in moving there because they just like the quality of life. They like that it's kind of away from you know, the Western world, they like that it's reasonable taxes. So Singapore is expected to gain 2,800, uh, not a cheap place to live. So just if you have a million bucks, that's not gonna get the job done. Uh, elsewhere in Asia, 8,000 millionaires leaving India. Uh, obviously big country, big number. China, 10,000. Hong Kong, there you go, 3,000 people leaving. Uh, the SAR. Russia, uh, for obvious reasons, 15,000 millionaires leaving. Ukraine, 2,800. They're saying almost half of Ukraine's high net worth individuals will leave by the end of 2022. Uh, so no surprises there. If you can get out of China, um, Russia, Ukraine, those make sense. And there was, a, there was a, a study, I mean, there have been studies all throughout the years that like two thirds of Chinese uh, wealthy want to either have a place to go, like a second residence, second home, second passport, or want to actually go. They understand culturally, I think it's in the culture to a certain extent, uh, have a backup plan, as the old story goes. Have um, uh, a second set of papers and uh, some gold coins in your, uh, your fast boat at the harbor to be ready to get out of town. And so a second passport, some, some money, whether you want to 
take gold coins or Bitcoin or cash or whatever it is you want, be ready to uh, go somewhere else when things get tough. I think they, they know that in Asia to a certain extent more than the West. At least the West is figuring it out. Uh, let's go to the West. Switzerland expected to gain 2,200 millionaires, plenty of millionaires in Switzerland, as is the case in Singapore. Uh, and so with Switzerland's favorable tax policies, again, if, if you just have a million dollars, you're probably not generating the income unless you're just starting a brand new business to take advantage of their lump sum taxation. That can be pretty expensive, even if you're a European citizen, to move into Switzerland. But if you're an ultra high net worth individual, hey, you pay a couple hundred grand a year in tax and uh, you get to live in one of the safest and um, most upscale parts of the world. So Switzerland is going to add a couple thousand millionaires. Meanwhile, the UK is losing 1,500. This is a country where the uh, Prime Minister is talking about new ways of how to take your passport away. They want to raise your tax. They talked about a wealth tax. All kinds of, by the way, a wealth tax on as little as, uh, was it half a million pounds? My goodness. Uh, you own a shoebox in London and you'll become the evil rich. Uh, Portugal is going to add 1,300. We've commented on Portugal. If you are, um, trading stocks, if you have a business, it is a relatively tax-friendly place to go. It's not Dubai, and I see that uh, the UAE is, uh, we'll come to that next. Uh, there are some tax benefits moving to Portugal. They are uh, really trying to get rid of the crypto tax benefits if you're in that space. Uh, but Portugal has really tried to attract people. Uh, they have been frustrating in recent months. Uh, but Portugal expected to add 1,300 millionaires, yeah, because they had rolled up the red carpet at least uh, for a long time, and they continue to have some tax incentives, some pretty serious tax incentives by European standards. So Portugal adding. Greece, what else uh, does Greece have in common with these other countries? Switzerland, Portugal, and Greece are the big uh, additions. Uh, Greece also has a flexible tax program, which you wouldn't think. I mean, Greece is kind of a mess, but they do have a flexible tax program. If you go there and you go to, you go to home, you can pay uh, just one lump sum amount of tax every year. They also have tax incentives for retirees. So if you're a millionaire retiree and you're bringing your pension, uh, you can do pretty well in Greece. So two countries in Europe that have their share of problems that are saying, all right, you got us. Bring your money and uh, we'll just charge you a little bit of tax. We won't charge you what we charge the locals. And that is attracting millionaires, no doubt. Um, Israel, 2,500 people. Um, interesting statistic there. Saudi Arabia is losing 600. Uh, the UAE adding 4,000, which this is where I start to think orders of magnitude. There are so many successful people. I mean, just look at, for example, uh, even though the markets are way down, the cryptocurrency space. Do you know how many cryptocurrency people I've seen around the Dubai Mall who come up to, just to me? If, if you extrapolate that, you've got a lot more than 4,000 people. Now, some of those people may not be millionaires anymore, but I see people doing all kinds of company formations. I mean, there are so many people moving to Dubai. Uh, into the UAE. 4,000 seems like a very low number. You've seen property prices jump by like 60%. I keep getting notifications for a place that I stayed in um, about a year ago. And I mean, the prices then, I'm like, oh, this is kind of a nice place. I wonder what it costs to buy in this uh, building. The prices then versus now, it's insane. Uh, everything's gone insane. Uh, Cayman Islands, places like that have gone insane. Um, Monaco prices are always kind of drifting upwards. Why? People are sick and tired of high taxes. Look at Puerto Rico for all the Americans moving down. Prices have gone through the roof since Joe Biden got elected. Uh, so you are seeing here a lot of countries that either are tax-free or have friendly tax regimes. Those of you going to Australia and New Zealand, I have no idea what you're thinking, but um, uh, God will, uh, Godspeed to you. Uh, Mexico losing 800, uh, Brazil losing 2,500. One thing I've noticed is in these emerging countries, there is a desire to go to the more developed countries. And in some cases, it's kind of a social status. Uh, it's like everybody goes to Canada or everybody goes to Portugal. Um, obviously, Portugal more tax friendly uh, than Canada. Uh, but there is some of that. And I think that among millionaires, there are just certain people who are saying, you know what? Uh, I live in Latin America. I'd like to drive a fancy car and not have to like keep that under wraps, right? Um, because certainly there are some safety issues there. I personally don't deal with them, but then I'm not driving a fancy car and I don't spend all my time there. So certainly I can see why people in Latin America, they, they want that. But I think, you know, quite frankly, you could live in Mexico and be perfectly safe, uh, but they would like to go elsewhere. They want, in some cases, the prestige of the, the higher level passport. Uh, I can tell you how many people I know from around the world who say, yeah, people from our country, they go to the US, they get the passport, they come back. It's just a status symbol. And then everyone in the U.S. is sitting there like, well, if it's so, if it's so, if it's so terrible here, like, why is everyone coming? Well, maybe that's why some of them are coming. They just want to get your passport and get out. Uh, U.S. to that point will add 1,500 millionaires. It seems like a really a low number when you consider that, you know, you have 
all kinds of different uh, visa programs which are going to start kicking back up um, that basically require you to be a millionaire or else you couldn't do it. Um, so that number does seem low. And uh, listen, uh, there are people who want to you know, start their next business in Silicon Valley. There are people who, again, the aforementioned Mexicans or Brazilians or Colombians who just want to live in Miami, and uh, it's a lifestyle decision. They don't care about the tax. And hey, that's cool. Canada's going to add a thousand people. Um, maybe that's the Canadians who, who couldn't come back and now they're going to come back in with their millions. Um, and so that's where people are moving. Now, I can tell you, obviously, we are here. We are uh, presenting in English, and so we talk to folks who speak English. Uh, where do we have people who are calling us from? Uh, the U.S., uh, Canada, big ones, Australia, big one, New Zealand, you know, big enough in relative to its size. Germans have been a big one. Dutch have been a big one. British, not quite as much, actually, but still a, a good number of British. Uh, those are probably the biggest ones because we speak English. We've also had a number of people from Mexico, Colombia, Brazil, uh, from Asia. We, we really help people from all over the world. Uh, but what we hear, especially from the Westerners, is the country's heading in the wrong direction. Taxes are going in the wrong direction. Um, I don't really feel safe anymore. I don't feel like I'm getting my money's worth anymore. So as much as you can say, you know what, I don't mind paying taxes. By the way, uh, especially as uh, I've become more successful, and especially as our business has, has become uh, uh, you know, a decent sized business, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'd be happy to pay something. I choose not to live in Switzerland just because I don't really want to live in Switzerland. I just don't think I get the value for the money. I don't think it would just, it's just not what I would do. Um, but if you said, hey, make 10 million bucks, live in Switzerland, you know, pay an effective tax rate of three or 4% uh, through the, uh, the incentives, hey, nothing wrong with that, right? You're probably getting the value for that. If you make 10 million bucks and you move to the United States, you're going to pay them 40 or 43 or 46 or 51 cents on the dollar between all the different taxes for the privilege of getting what? You don't even get to go to a hospital? Are you getting the value for the money at that point? And so millionaires have different decisions as to where they should go. I believe that, I mean, you can choose your policies on finances, freedom, and lifestyle. You get to define those things, okay? We work with all different kinds of people. You know, Asia, obviously a bit more regimented for that kind of person, Singapore can work. Europe offers, you know, lifestyle benefits, you can work towards a second passport. You're going to pay a little bit of tax. That works for certain people. And then you can look at countries that aren't even on the list. You know, millionaires who are moving to Panama. We've got millionaires who are moving to Panama. We've got millionaires moving to Nicaragua. We've got millionaires moving to the Cayman Islands. Uh, certainly, you know, the UAE, like Asia, is more regimented. But you can go to places in Latin America that are perhaps more open and more, more personal freedom. You can go to Eastern Europe. Uh, you know, next to Greece, you've got, not right next to Greece, but near Greece, you've got Montenegro. Um, you can recreate a beautiful lifestyle there, and you have you know, ultra low tax rates that you can use, uh, and there's a certain flexibility in the tax system. So, you know, where are millionaires moving? A million dollars is not a bloody fortune anymore. And so, what we're seeing is people who have that, you know, one to ten million dollars are often open to places that aren't even on that list. They are emerging places because they just want to be left alone. They're tired of the high taxes, and you know what they're saying? They're saying at that level, I will just take care of myself. I'll go to the hospital. I'll pay for it. I'll, I'll pay tolls to drive on the toll road. I'll pay a fee to register my car. Just, just leave me alone. Let me keep my money. I will pay for what I need. Thank you very much. Um, and then we see is from people, you know, 10 million and above, it starts, you know, especially 30 million and above, it's like, okay, what's the right optics? Where do I want to be seen as the guy running my business or as a big investor? Like, I don't want to be in Nicaragua and investing in companies in Silicon Valley. Just people are going to find that weird. So maybe I'll be in Switzerland. Maybe I'll be in Malta not listed here. Maybe you'll be in Portugal. But we're seeing millionaires move all over the world. And so uh, if you think they're all going to the U.S., you'd be mistaken. Certainly it appears some are coming back. But I think you can see a lot more migration to the UAE, to Singapore. The, the, the proof is in the numbers and the way that the property prices have gone up. The proof is in uh, just how many applications they're processing. And by the way, the proof is also in the fact that millionaires are putting together Plan Bs, even if they're not moving, which is why certain citizenship programs have seen an increase from Americans of almost tenfold. Uh, certain golden visa programs in Europe have seen a five-fold increase in Americans over the last couple of years who realize, hey, I'm a millionaire. I might want to migrate in the future. So plan A, here's people who are moving. Plan B, lots more millionaires who are preparing to move with second residences, second passports, and if nothing else, they're moving their assets overseas. That says a lot about what millionaires think about countries, and we help people do it all every day.